Welcome back to Game Development with Pygame. This is part six of our tile-based game. And in this video, we will be implementing rotation for our player sprite and dealing with several problems that that's going to cause uh, that are going to make things work a little differently than they have before. OK, so we have our player sprite, which is this little uh, blue character with a gun that we're going to, we want to make this sprite have free rotation. So I want to be able to turn and point in any direction, 360 degrees around. Um, so that means we need to start talking about how we're going to control that and how we're going to deal with the graphics and collisions and everything like that. So I'm first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to my uh, settings and I'm going to add a new constant for the player. It's going to be his rotation speed. This is going to be in, remember everything is per second because we're using the delta time on the frames. So everything's going to be multiplied by, just like we, we did this movement speed. So this is going to be in degrees per second. So it's going to take him a little more than a second to go all the way around. And you'll see how it works when we start. And this will give you an easy way to adjust how fast or slow you want the player to be able to turn. And now we can go over to our sprite here. And the settings we need to add to this. We're going to need a variable that's going to track how far we've rotated. Okay. And we're starting out pointing to the right. So that's going to be a rotation of zero degrees. We're pointing to the right, which means we're pointing along the positive x axis. And then we're going to go down here to our key uh, to our key settings. And the rotation speed is going to work the same way as the velocity. As long as we have the key down, he moves. And when we let go, he stops. We're going to do the same thing with rotation. So our rotation speed will normally be 0. We're not rotating. Okay, but we are going to add that left and right, or A and B, are going to rotate us now, not make us move. So these are going to change. Left and right are going to change to setting our rotation speed equal to the player's rotation speed. So let's get rid of that. These are going to be negative and positive player rotation speed. Although I think I need to swap those. Turning to the left is going to turn us in the positive direction. Pressing right is going to rotate us in the negative direction. And now up, the up arrow is going to move us forward. So that means it's going to change our velocity. And we want it to we want this velocity to now be pointing in whatever direction we are facing, right? Which means there's a couple of ways we could do this. You could figure out what angle you're pointing at based on the how much we've rotated. And then, you know, multiply that, the cosine and the sine times the x and y, right? It starts to get tricky with trigonometry. But vectors make this really easy. What we want to do is we want the player to move forward, right? So at whatever the player speed is. So if we did that, right, that means move at the player speed in the x direction and zero in the y direction. That would mean move at the player speed directly to the right, right, the way we're facing normally or when we start. And we just want to take that vector and rotate it by whatever our rotation is. And we're putting the negative here because um, normal and we're putting the negative here because we're basically uh, rotating this vector in the opposite direction um, from the direction that we are pointing so that it will match our rotation that we did with the keys. You'll see what I mean when we when we do it, but we're going to do that with the up and down, and both of these are going to do the same thing. So I'm going to just duplicate that. Oops. 
shift that down, delete that. And when we move backwards, we can also make it, we can just say that's negative, right? The opposite direction. And I'm also going to divide it by two. So we move at half the speed when we move backwards. Now we're only moving in one direction, right? The direction we're pointing in. So we don't need to solve the diagonal problem anymore. We're not we're going to be moving in a diagonal direction um, versus a horizontal and vertical. We're moving in a rotated speed at any angle. Okay, so that is going to do that. So now our velocity is rotated to point in the direction we're facing. Now we just need to go down here to our update and make sure that just like we update our position by whatever our velocity is, we also need to update our rotation by whatever our rotation speed is. So our rotation now we're going to take the rotation and we're going to add the rotation speed uh, times the delta time. And I'm going to take the remainder, use the remainder function by 360. That way when we, if we rotate 361 degrees, that just changes this back to one. So our, we don't have to have our angle keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? It's only going to be between zero and, you know, 360. So that's going to change our rotation. So now our rotation variable changes. That changes our velocity to rotate at that angle. Now, if we were to run this, obviously we have a problem because the graphics aren't going to change. But you can see that when I rotate, you know, I'm... I am able to rotate, and if I'm, I'm holding the uh, the turning, I'm holding the left arrow down, so I'm turning and rotating around. But we need to do that. We need to rotate the image to match. So that means we need to take, oops, we need to take another step here. And after we rotate, we need to take our image and we need to transform it. And we're going to rotate. the original player image by whatever our rotation is. Right now that, of course, isn't quite enough because now our rotation looks like this, right? Every time I turn, because my rectangle isn't updating to put me in the right place. So I can run around, but it's obviously not good, right? So we need to rotate around. We need our player to rotate around its center. We need the sprite to rotate around its center. Right now it's rotating around the corner. And so that means that the center is probably the location that we want to track as well. We want the center to be where the position, our position is tracked from. So that position is what changes when we move around. That's going to be the center of the sprite. And that's going to be a lot easier to calculate things than, than using the corner of the rectangle. So that means we have to change a few more things. So one thing we need to do is we need to say that uh, here, when we move our rectangle, it's the center that uses that position, not the corner. But it also means that when we rotate our image, remember that image is going to change in proportions. So its rectangle is going to change. So whenever we rotate, in order to keep the sprite centered, we have to calculate what our new rectangle is. Right? We get the new rectangle, and we put that the center of that rectangle at our same position that our previous rectangle was at. And what that allows us to do now is, oops, I put a dot in there. This is supposed to be center X and center Y of the rectangle. Okay, so now that looks much better. I rotate around my center. I can move forward in whatever direction. Um, but now, if you notice, when I get off of here, my camera is still 
very bouncy. And that's because the camera was using the corner of the rectangle. We need to up update our camera to also use the center. Uh, we also have some major problems with our wall collisions because our wall collisions, we're trying to put the uh, corner of the rectangle against the wall, but then we're telling it to calculate its position using the center. And so those two things are conflicting and we get all sorts of weirdness with the walls. So we can fix the camera really easy by going over to our camera here and saying when we update, we use the uh, center, not the corner. Center X and center Y. And that's going to prevent that bouncing uh, problem when we're out in camera land and we rotate. See, the camera does not move when we turn. It only moves when we move. So now let's talk about the walls. So if we go over here to our wall collision code. Our wall collision code right now is it's putting the position, but it's not putting it in the right place, right? Because we want to put our, for example, when we hit the, when we're moving to the right and we hit the side of a wall moving to the right, we want to put ourselves at the left minus width over two because we're using the center. But we also want to put our right at the right plus the width over two. Okay? And same idea with the height when we're talking about the y-axis. Okay? And then we also need to make sure we put our, uh, that here we use the center x or center y as that position. Okay, so now you can see I can go up against the wall and that works, but I still have a problem. That problem happens when I rotate. And to be even more specific, that problem happens if I rotate after I've collided with the wall, right? So let's say I'm going to the, the, I'm moving to the right. I hit that wall, no problem, right? But if I'm up against the wall and I rotate and then I try and move, like say that, then I get a problem, right? Now, does anybody can you guess what that is? Some of you might have already guessed what is causing this problem. But the easiest way to see it is to illustrate it by going over here to our game and drawing and drawing our player's rectangle on the screen so that we can see what's happening. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to draw After this, I'm going to draw a rectangle on the screen in white, and I just want to use the player's rectangle. All right, a player's rectangle and a, a thickness of two. So now I have my pl player's rectangle, and now you can see what happens to it as I rotate. Because the proportions of the sprite change, so does the size of the rectangle. So if I move over against this wall, I'm fine until I rotate. Now the rectangle is colliding with the wall. But our collisions check for when we move. So as soon as I move, it's going to detect a collision. Now I'm fine, and I rotate, and I try and move. Oh, it just snapped me to the top of the rectangle, I mean the top of the wall. So our problem is that our collision rectangle is tied to our rotation and varies in size. And that's going to make it really hard to keep our collisions with the walls working correctly because we don't know how wide and how tall our rectangle is going to be. It's going to change and all sorts of crazy stuff is going to happen. 
making us teleport through walls and things we don't want to happen. So what we need is we need a rectangle that's not going to move. This rectangle, we're stuck with it moving. It's going to change because the size of the image is going to change. But we don't have to use this rectangle as our collision rectangle. We can have a different hitbox for collisions than we use for the drawing. Okay, so we're going to need to create another rectangle for our player to use for the collisions. And how big we want to make that can, well, it can sort of vary, right? We're going to call this the hit rect. And I'm going to go ahead and define this here so that we can change it later, right? So let's say we want to make it 35 by 35. So it's just a rectangle of that size, or a square, I should say. Um, that means we're going to need to import Pygame so we don't get an error here. Uh, Autocomplete. Um, okay, so we've defined that rectangle that our player sprite is going to use. And now we just make sure that when we go over here and spawn our player, uh, we set up that rectangle. Okay, so we're going to say we're going to get our regular rectangle and then we're going to say our hit our hit rect is also is going to be that and then the center of that should be e equal to the same, right? We we always want the center of our hit rect to be the same as our image rect. But that means now that in our movement, what we want to move is our hit rect, right? So our hit rect dot center is what we move and to check with the collision, right? Our hit rect is what we move to check with the collision. And that means in our uh, collision code, we're also going to use the hit rect. So this is going to be the hit rect. This is going to be the hit rect. Uh, this is going to be the hit rect. And this is going to be the hit rect. And also, we place our hit rect against the wall. So the hit rect is what bumps up against the wall when they collide. And in our update, then after we've moved the hit rect to see if it collides, set the hit rect against the wall. We make sure that our regular rect gets set equal to our hit rect. Okay. Now here's the problem. This function right here, sprite collide, automatically looks at a sprite and a group of sprites and uses their rect parameter. It uses, it's going to use this. No matter how many other rectangles we make, it's not going to use this, right? So we need to, we need to modify this to tell it to use the hit rect instead. And we can do that by just creating a quick little function. Um, now I'm going to put it I'm going to put it here for now. We're actually going to find a home for it later, but we're going to make a function called collide hit rect. Okay. It's just going to take two sprites, sprite one and sprite two, and it's just going to return the uh, collide rectangle, right? The, it's going to use that with two dot right so we're just going to take in this case what we're going to have it do is the player versus the wall right so every time it tries a collision it's going to compare the player's hit rect versus the wall rectangle and send that back instead of just comparing the two rects if i did this that's exactly what the normal 
collision does. Okay, so we just go over here and say for these, we tell them to use our new function. Use collide hit rect instead. Okay, so that's going to use that function. Um, we just need to make sure that we import that file. We just make sure we uh, import that function. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go over here and draw. Instead of drawing our player's rectangle, Let's just draw our hit rectangle real quick, just so that we can see it. Okay, there's our hit rectangle. And see when I turn, it doesn't move. And that hit rectangle is gonna hit the wall. And it's gonna stay against the wall. Now it's, the camera isn't tracking it, so it's not gonna work when we go off, but this is just for us to test it, right? So the hit rect is going to map against the wall just fine, just like it used to do when we were a plain square and not a rotating player. All right, so if I, I'm going to just comment this out, and then you're going to see it's going to look really nice, right? I can bump up against walls, I can run against them, everywhere I go, my hit rect is what's determining whether I've collided with a wall or not. And because it's a little bit smaller than the sprite, we can get close up against a wall too. You see how I'm overlapping it just slightly graphically? Um, we can adjust that too to get it just the way we want it. Also, because of the way sprites are drawn, our player is sometimes underneath a sprite and sometimes on top of it, but that's something we'll fix later when we um, start talking about doing the wall graphics. So don't worry about that right now. The point is that we have our collisions working again, and they are not dependent on how our sprite is rotated. In fact, they're not dependent on what the sprite looks like at all, right? They're just controlled by that hitbox, and we can customize that hitbox to be whatever we want, and it will always remain. All right, that will do it for this video. As always, please hit the like button below if you found this video useful and subscribe for the next video because we have a lot more to come. Thanks and I'll see you next time.